It's my absolute pleasure to be here with um, Professor Michael Jacobides, who uh, participated in um, our Brightline workshop yesterday about transformation, the Transformation Compass, and people-centered transformation, how important that is. And you also participated in this morning's uh, conversation opening at the Peter Drucker Forum, um, talking about ecosystems. Mm -hmm. And I, I so much um, reflected on the comment you made yesterday at the workshop around uh, creating an ecosystem. An ecosystem is about um, creating a dense web, you said, of relationships that create an actual ecosystem and the relationships mm -hmm. aspect of the ecosystem I, I quite relate, uh, related to because as we think about Brightline and the kinds of things that we're doing, um, it's not just about us and our thinking being able to, to um, wrap our arms around others and their thinking and be able to bring that together through mm -hmm. a collaboration. Is that the kind of thing you're thinking about and what, how, tell me about um, your perspective around ecosystems. Yeah, well, I think that what we're seeing is uh, almost a tail end of an evolution where uh, it is becoming increasingly clear that uh, uh, no man is his own island. Um, yes. And it started by a division of labor that was between firms, each one uh, working on a very well delineated in specific areas. So you had sectors well defined, firms well defined, markets well defined. So you knew what you were selling. You were selling a particular line of financial uh, service products. You were selling you know, particular types of yogurt or of uh, automobiles. And even though you needed to collaborate, the nature of your collaborations was nothing to write home about. You had some yes. suppliers, you had some downstream um, distributors if you're a manufacturer, or uh, channels of distribution if you're in the service business. And uh, you just needed to ensure that you do your, your work right. Now what's changed is the fact that we are increasingly seeing uh, these boundaries that uh, separated the world in these neatly organized separate uh, industries and markets that are going down. So what's happening is that people want some kinds of services and solutions. Not just people, businesses want services and solutions. So what we have seen is a change in the way that procurement happens at the level of businesses that are interested in having their needs covered. And that isn't just that you respond to our an RFP, but that you provide solutions, which is the word that has uh, come up. And that's where the ecosystems become uh, interesting for two reasons. First of all, you need to figure out where it is that you yourself are focusing because it is not something that you know to begin with. It isn't someone that is saying, here's your neatly delineated part of your business. And what we see is that there is an increasing interpenetration mm -hmm. and we see people who are trying to offer these solutions across different players. The second thing that happens is that once you do that, you're like, well, I might not be able to do everything myself, but I may be able to coordinate with other players right. in order to offer new stuff. And there's where we're coming to the second big force, because one of them is this reduction in terms of the boundaries uh, between industries, driven quite often by regulation that is becoming increasingly more permissive. Mm -hmm. But you also see the changes in technology. I mean, right now, the possibilities of linking stuff through digital technology and offering you something that provides all-in-one service is remarkable. Your fridge will order your milk. Yes. Your computer will tell your car to unlock so that a crew that has agreed with your, uh, with the maker of the locks and with a car and with an operating system, unlocks the doors so that they can clean it and then locks them again. And someone else, whom you have also found through your phone, yes. is going to give the groceries in your trunk so you can go home. As far as I'm concerned, as a customer, this is great because I'm saying, okay, now I'm going to have some solutions that cover my needs and it allows me to be more creative in what is it that people need or what is it that, that businesses need. At the same time, in addition to having this great customer simplicity, you need to say, mm. in order for me to make all of that good stuff work, 
I probably need to work with a number of different other partners. Yeah. I'm not going to do it all myself. I'm not going to employ people. Neither will I have things that are long chains of suppliers. But I'll find people and say, look, if someone asks me to unlock the, your car, should I tell them that your service is available? And this is what Hyundai has done with Blue Link. And uh, the, there is the company called WashOS that washes yeah. your cars yeah. on the basis of the platform that it gets. And it is able to provide, on the one hand, a seamless experience vis-a-vis yeah. -vis, um, the customer. But on the other hand, it works on the complexity of carefully organized relationships that it has with the complementers, with the people that you can work together in order to add value to the customer. So in a way, you have this interesting yin and yang of um, business ecosystems. Um, traditionally, uh, Yang is associated with the bright, the luminous, the simple, let's say, the thing that makes the customer happy. But there's also Yin, which is its counterpart. It needs to balance it, which is the careful business design, the collaborations that are created with other organizations, the terms that you, you create with them. You know, yes. is it uh, revenue sharing? Um, is this a joint venture? How do you put it together? So right now we are in a period where I think success is driven by intelligent business design yes. more than just with operation uh, efficiency. Yes.